If you're looking to upgrade your car with a bright, high-definition touchscreen that connects wirelessly with your mobile phone and your car's stereo system using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, but you don't want to spend hundreds of pounds ripping out the dashboard and installing a new head unit, then this might be the ideal solution. Hi, welcome to Big Ted's Home and Garden. In today's video, we're going to look at how we can add Apple AirPlay or Android Auto to your car in less than five minutes. This is the Carpuride W903 portable 9.3 inch high definition CarPlay and Android Auto screen. New cars these days come with built in infotainment systems which link seamlessly with your mobile phone. But there are still millions of cars on the roads which don't have these modern systems. One of these cars is this, my daughter's Ford Fiesta. She's been desperate for a touch screen. But when you look at the price of replacement units, these are the two best selling units from a major UK chain and the complexity, time and cost involved in fitting them, it's difficult to justify putting one in a car that's only worth a couple of thousand pounds. That's until we came across this, the Carpuride W903. This is a great little unit that you can fit in seconds. There are several different fitting options which we'll look at later, and you can also remove it if you're worried about security. And because it runs off your 12 volt cigarette lighter, there's no hard wiring to do. It's simply a case of plugging it in and it's ready to go in seconds. That's all in real time and took 8 seconds. As an added bonus, this Carpuride screen also has a built-in camera which rotates 350 degrees so you can either use it as a dash cam or you can rotate it so you can keep an eye on the kids fighting in the back or you can even record your own carpool karaoke. The camera output's recorded onto a micro SD card so you can view it later if you want to. This high definition screen costs a fraction of the price of a fitted unit and it's even cheaper if you use the discount codes that are in the description below. So what do you actually get if you buy one of these things? This is the box that the screen's supplied in and printed on the sides of the box are a lot of the key features. I'll try to demonstrate most of these later in the video but for me the main ones are being able to use voice control to make calls, a sat nav etc and the ability to connect your car speakers through Bluetooth to be able to play your music on Spotify, for example. If your car doesn't have Bluetooth, you can also use an AUX cable, or you can connect to the car using an FM transmitter built into the screen. So let's open up the box and see what we've got inside. The first thing you see is the screen unit itself. It's wrapped in a protective non-woven covering, and underneath, when we take it out, it's also got a plastic screen protector on it. So to give you an idea of dimensions, I'll just put that down and we'll get the tape measure out. You can see that the length of the screen is 24 centimetres or 9.5 inches. And the width of the screen is 9.4 centimetres or about 3 and 3 quarter inches. The diagonal measurement from corner to corner is about 26 centimetres or just over 10 inches. So let's put the screen to one side and see what else is in the box. Underneath the foam screen surround and the cardboard insert we've got a suction cup mounting for mounting the screen to either the windscreen or the dashboard. We've got a 3.5mm aux cable. There's the power lead for connecting to the 12 volt power supply. This is a mounting bracket with double sided tape for attaching the dash cam to a dashboard. There's a hard plastic base for a more permanent installation of the suction cup bracket. And there's the instruction manual. Also included is a 64 gigabyte micro SD card. I didn't notice this at first because it was already fitted inside the unit. The connection ports are all along one side of the screen. Going from the left we've got the aux out, then the micro SD card, then the AV in. That's for connecting the optional rear view camera. And then finally the power input. On the back of the screen is the camera. This camera can record in up to 4K resolution. And a nice touch is that it will rotate almost a full 360 degrees. So you can have it front facing to use as a dash cam or you can reverse it. So you can film the interior of the car. It's great for keeping an eye on the kids in the back seat. Mine are 24 and 22 and they still fight. And if you don't want to use the camera or you just want to take the screen off for storage, you can simply push the camera down into the back of the unit. The front of the screen is very clean, there's just a small logo and the microphone. 
Installing the screen is very straightforward, but it's dependent on the layout of your console and dashboard. If I flip the screen over, you can see there's four mounting holes on the back. And both of the mounting solutions supplied have four lugs which fit into these holes. The screen simply pushes down onto the lugs. If you've got flat section on your dashboard, like in this Mark 7 Ford Fiesta, then we found that this stick-on mounting bracket was the best option. You can adjust the orientation of the screen, the height and the viewing angle. And once you've secured it in place using the double-sided adhesive pad, we found that it was very stable and secure. Many dashboards though aren't flat or have screens that you don't want to cover up. So the other option that's supplied is the suction cup mount. This mount has an adhesive suction cup and it's fully adjustable. You can adjust the angle of mounting. which is then secured using this knob. It's telescopic, so you can adjust the length of the mount. And there's a ball joint on the end of the mount so that you can adjust the orientation and the angle of the screen. And then when you're happy, you simply secure it by tightening this nut. This shows a screen fitted to the windscreen of a Toyota Yaris. I fitted this towards the corner of the windscreen, but because of the rotation of the camera, you can adjust it so it points forwards. The third option is to use the adhesive back plastic plate supplied to fix the suction mount to the dashboard. This might work for you, but personally I found this the least stable of the three options. If none of the mounting options that are supplied work for you, you can also get CD mounts or air vent mounts, which Carpuride will actually supply for free. That's excellent customer service. Whichever way you choose to mount it, once you've got the screen installed, it's actually very easy to remove again. You simply lift the screen up off the lugs and it lifts off easily. To refit, just push it down onto the lugs. The whole thing takes seconds. To power the screen, you need to use the power cable. This has got a USB-C connector on one end and a 12 volt connector on the other. To connect the power cable, you'll probably find it's easier to take the screen off the mount. The connection ports are all on the left hand side of the screen and there's only one that the power cable will fit. Just push it in and then you can put the screen back onto the mount. And plug the power cable into the 12 volt cigarette lighter. If you want to tidy things up you can run the cable behind the dashboard and underneath the door trim and the carpets across the centre console. You don't have to do this, but it just makes the whole thing a bit neater and hides the cables out of the way. So that's the installation basically. So you simply plug it in and as long as your ignition's turned on, the screen will come on. Start up takes about eight seconds. And there we are, ready to go. To connect the screen to your phone, you select either Apple CarPlay or Android Auto and you'll be prompted to go into the settings in your mobile phone and connect via Bluetooth. This is the process using Android Auto. My daughter used Apple CarPlay to connect to the screen and she said it was equally as straightforward. So I'm going to select the car you ride and pair with it and there we go, it's connected. And the car, the screen and the phone will all work seamlessly together. So once you're connected you can go back to the home screen, peel off the protective screen cover and it'll load up, in this case, Apple CarPlay. Film Finipix digital camera. The screen's bright, clear and responsive. It's easy to scroll between the pages and select the apps that you want. You can choose full screen or split screen. It's all very intuitive. It's just like using your phone. If you want to make a call, you can either use the touchscreen options Or you can use voice control, both work well. Hey Siri, call dad. Calling dad. And as you can hear, it's not affected by background noise like torrential Lake District rain. The voice control is also useful when using the sat nav. Hey Siri, find a petrol station. One possibility I see is Shell on Newby Bridge in Alveston. Or you can use it to control music playback. Hey Siri. Play Spotify. I'm going to turn the sound off here because I don't want to get hit by a copyright infringement. But sound quality is very good if you're using the car speaker system either via Bluetooth or via the supplied aux cable.
The internal speaker's not that great. It's probably best used just for um, sat-nav. There is a fourth option, which is to tune both the car radio and the unit to an unused FM frequency, but I can't comment on how well that works. The built-in dash cam is a nice feature to have. Picture quality is okay, and it's good that you can adjust the direction the lens is facing, but depending on where you've installed the device in the car, you might find that the camera position's a little bit low, and that a significant proportion of the view will actually be of your dashboard. You can see another issue with this dash cam if you look at the lamp posts. Using a wide angle lens gives you a bigger field of vision, but you can see you've got significant distortion towards the edges. To view captured dash cam footage, select playback from the screen and then videos, and then select from the list on the right hand side. You can download the video clip so you can simply take out the SD card and copy the clips onto your laptop. So are there any issues with the Carpuride W903? Unfortunately for me, there was one big one. With iPhones using CarPlay, connectivity was brilliant. But if you want to use Android Auto, there are unfortunately some Android phones which are not compatible with this device. And as luck would have it, mine was one of them. CarPuride, to be fair, are upfront about this. And there's a list of non-compatible phones on their website. But you can see this list includes the Samsung S23 and S20. If your phone is compatible though, I would highly recommend this device. It's a great way of modernising an older car for relatively little cost. Especially if you use the discount codes in the description below. This W903 touchscreen was provided by Carpuride for review. But like all my videos, this review is totally independent. So I hope you found this video useful. If you have, leave a thumbs up. Any questions, leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to Big Ted's Home and Garden. I'll see you soon.